Hey everybody, today we're going to continue on with our study of electrostatic, static electricity, um, and we're going to look at a very specific thing that occurs with charge movement, and that's something called charge parallel plates. Uh, another term can be something called a capacitor, but it's sort of the same idea. Charge parallel plates are essentially two metal plates that are facing each other and have the opposite charge on each other. So an example of this for, is a fluorescent light tube. If you ever think about a fluorescent light bulb, uh, if you look at it, there are these two metal plates at the end with these prongs sticking out of them. And when you flip on the electricity, what happens is that one side becomes positively charged and the other side becomes negatively charged. Okay? And the charge is equal on each side. Um, now because of that, what ends up being created is an electric field that exists in between the parallel plates. And as we know from our rules of electric field lines, electric field lines must begin on a positive and end on a negative. So they go straight across. Now, the most important part about this, if you remember, around any charge, the electric field strength gets weaker and weaker with distance. However, with parallel plates, the electric field strength between the plates is constant. In other words, it maintains the same value everywhere between the plates. Okay, so that's the first important concept about charge parallel plates, is that the electric field strength is constant at all points between the plates. Now imagine any particles that are inside these plates. Okay? Now if a particle happens to be touching the positive plate, it will conduct onto it a positive charge because it was neutral, but now it's going to be positively charged. Now, since the particle has a positive charge and the plate has a positive charge, it's going to be repelled and, of course, attracted to the other side, which means there must be an electrical force acting on it. Now, the value or the amount of charge, that's also going to be a constant for any given moment. Okay, so the electric field and the electric charge are both constant. Now if you remember, when we did the equation for Coulomb's law, Fe equals kq1 q2 over r squared, we found there was a second relationship for electric force when we had a known electric field, Fe equals eq. Well, by that logic, if the electric field is constant, and the electric charge is constant, that means that the electric force applied to the charge is also constant everywhere. Now, the mass of the charge, well, that has to be a constant. So you have a lot of constants here. Now, if F equals EQ, according to Newton's second law, we also know that F equals MA. So if force is constant and mass is constant, well, that means any accelerations that the charge experiences must also be constant. What isn't constant? It's got to be something that's not constant, right? Well, acceleration. Remember how we define acceleration? Change in velocity over time. So if there's an acceleration, the velocity is not constant. Okay? In fact, it will accelerate from one side to the other. Okay? And that's part of how fluorescent light also works. The particles are energized, and when they gain that energy, it's hard for them to hold on to that energy, so they tend to release it in the form of lights, uh, particularly ultraviolet light. That ultraviolet light then strikes the coating of the fluorescent tube, causing it to glow, giving off that light. So, the electric force is E times Q. Now, keep in mind, this is when we have a known or constant electric field. We can use this equation. Okay. So as soon as you're talking about parallel plates, you're going to have a constant electric field. So use this equation. Don't use the K1Q2 over R squared one. Always use this one. So any charge placed between the plates has a force that has the same value at all points. So let's look at what looks like a long, complicated example, but may not be so bad. We have a set of parallel plates. Okay, so one side's positive, the other side is negative. Um, we have a charge of 5 nanocoulombs, this is 
with a mass of 6 to the minus 23 kilograms that's placed between the plates, say next to one of them. And there is an electric field of 2,000 newtons per coulomb, and the plates themselves are 10 centimeters apart. First question, determine the amount of electric force that charge experiences. Now, it doesn't matter where the charge is, because we just said the electric force is a constant value. Now, here's the key. You are given the electric field strength. Don't try to calculate it. It's given. 2,000 newtons per coulomb. The amount of charge, 5 nanocoulombs. Well, a nano means 10 to the minus 9. So 5 times 10 to the minus 9. And that gives an electric force, this charge experience, of 1 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons, everywhere and at all times. My second question says, determine the acceleration of the charge. Well, we just found force, and we know the mass, so we can still apply Newton's second law of motion. That's got to apply everywhere in the universe, right? So we have a force of 1 times 10 to the minus 5 that we just found. The mass of the charge was given as 6 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms. And that gives a very large acceleration of 1.67 times 10 to the 17th meters per second squared. Now don't be bothered by that because it's a very, very tiny particle, so it'll undergo an extraordinarily large acceleration. The last question says, assuming we're just going to start from rest at one side, what will be its velocity when it reaches to the other side? What's its final velocity? Well, if we assume we start from rest, an initial velocity of zero, we now have an acceleration and we have a displacement. Oh, guess what we can still use? Our old friend, time unknown. Wow, are we still doing motion equations? So final squared, starting from rest, initial squared, two, acceleration, 1.67 times 10 to the 17th and a distance of 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. Okay, which gives a final velocity squared of 3.33 times 10 to the 16th. So then we'll take the square root of that. And that gives a final velocity at the other side of 1.83 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Pretty fast, right? But again, it's a charged particle. They will move very fast. It's again, nothing overly complicated in this one. Parallel plates are pretty easy to work with. Um, that F equals EQ equation helps us find force. F equals MA still helps us find acceleration. And yes, we can still use linear motion or kinematic equations to solve answers, even in electrostatics. Now, one of the things that electricity also has is something called electric potential energy. Okay, so now we've talked about several potential energies so far this year, so this is going to be another one. But one of the things that we've seen so far is both the electrical force and the gravitational force are very similar, both directly proportional to the products, inversely proportional distance squared. And we've also seen the electric and gravitational fields are very similar. Well, it turns out that electric potential energy and gravitational potential energy are also both similar. Now remember, Potential energy is described as energy due to position, um, or sometimes called stored energy. Well, let's compare these two. Well, we already know that if I have a mass sitting on the ground, it doesn't have any potential energy. But when I lift it up to a certain height, I give it this gravitational potential energy, mgh. Now, of course, in the process of lifting it up, I did work. Okay? So that work is the same as that potential energy that I gave it by lifting it up. Um, and if you remember, work is force times distance. If we look over here at parallel plates, again, let's say I have a positively charged plate here and a negatively charged plate here. And that gives me my constant electric field everywhere. Now I have a charge here, and if this charge is also positive, okay, then it experiences an electrical force. And that electrical force acts over this entire distance. So what that means is that there will be work done in order to move that charge from one end to the other. 
Now that electrical force we found is the electric field times the charge. So what that means is the work would be the force times the distance. But again, we can equate work and the idea of potential energy. So a way we can determine or use the electric potential energy is QED, charge times electric field times distance. Okay? So each one of these potential energies is based on your position in the field. And again, electric potential energy is given by the equation QED. Now, notice that when the ball here is dropped, that potential energy changes over into kinetic energy. Well, the same thing has to occur here. If we start off with potential energy of the charge here, it's accelerated across. That distance decreases, the potential energy goes down, but it's exchanged for kinetic energy, which means we can still use conservation of energy. So let's look at this example. Well, if you look, it's the same example. 5 nanocoulomb charge with a mass of 6 to the minus 23 kilograms placed between two parallel plates with a 2,000 newton per coulomb electric field 10 centimeters apart. Different question here, though, at the beginning. It says determine what its electric potential energy would be. Okay. Well, electric potential energy is QED. We have the charge, 5 nanocoulombs, 5 times 10 to the minus 9. Again, we have the electric field strength, 2,000 newtons per coulomb and the distance between the plates, 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters, which gives an electric potential energy at the beginning of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 joules. Now, the second question says, if the charge is released from rest, determine the velocity at the other plate. Now, as we saw before, what we could do is calculate the electric force, from there get the acceleration, and use motion to get the final velocity. But as we learned before, when we understand the idea of conservation of energy, sometimes that's a little easier to do that way. If all the potential energy is converted entirely into kinetic, they have to be equal. And kinetic energy is still that same formula, 1 half mv squared. So now I know that I'm going to end up with 1 times 10 to the minus 6 joules of kinetic energy acting on that 6 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms. And when I do all the math out, what I end up with is 1.83 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Well, I'd better, because that's the same answer I got last time. So whether I use force in motion or conservation of energy, I better end up with the same answer each time. So that's basically the idea of electric potential energy and parallel plates. Again, keep in mind with parallel plates. The difference between parallel plates and lone charges is in parallel plates, the electric field is constant everywhere in between the plates. Where it charges, it gets weaker with distance. Also with parallel plates, if there is a charge in there, the charge experiences a constant force everywhere between the plates, a constant acceleration everywhere between the plates, but it doesn't have a constant velocity. Its velocity will change, particularly as the potential energy decreases and the kinetic energy increases. Okay, that's all for today. See you next time.